Well, good morning there, Robert McLean and Frank Lowell. Good morning. Good hey, morning. How's it going today? I'll Pretty tell you. You know, I don't know if any of you... A little chilly this morning. Yes, any indeed. of you guys actually suffer from migraines. I get them from time to time. And when you I get a, don't, but people in my family do. Yeah, you ever get a migraine there, Rob? You are my migraine. I know. But there <laughs> are, I get them from time to time. Not chronically, but uh, I do get them from time to time, and they are debilitating, no doubt about it. Dr. Peter J. McAllister, Director of Clinical Research at the Headache Center at the Associated Neurologist of Southern Connecticut. And we're going to find out a bit about uh, living with those uh, migraine headaches for half your life out there. Doctor, good morning. Good morning, guys. Thanks for having me on. Well, I'll tell you, you know, for folks that get headaches, they know what it's like. But when you get a migraine, man, I'll tell you, mm. your day is over, done, and out. Uh, you can't, you don't want to look at light. You don't want to hear sounds. You, you just feel like you're going to kill right over. I mean, it's, it's really a pretty bad feeling. But people suffer from this all the time, don't they? They do, and I think you said it perfectly. We've all had, most of the U.S. population has had an occasional uh, light headache, but if you can imagine having a throbbing, severe one with light and sound sensitivity, you're nauseous, you're throwing up, you can't concentrate, and therefore you can't go to work, you can't take care of your kids, and as you mentioned, for that time period, your life is on hold. So what is it that happens inside the head that makes this headache so much worse than a regular headache? Well, this is a medical condition as opposed to the common headaches that we all get. That's part and parcel of life. This has to do with nerve tissue in the brain turning on inappropriately and sending signals to the pain areas of the brain that result not only in the throbbing and all that, but also to other areas of brain that slow down uh, thinking, that make you dizzy. So it really is a neurological, genetically inherited brain condition. And it's bad enough if it happens once or twice or three times a month, but chronic migraine migraine is a condition that's even worse. This is a subset that's having 15 or more headache days a month lasting more than four hours. And if you talk about disability and missing out on life, these guys are the prime example. You know, and it's uh, like I said, I get them from time to time. I actually came out this weekend on Sunday. I was, I had a migraine that lasted about eight hours. Mm. And, I, you know, I still feel the effects today. Here it is uh, Tuesday. I'm still sort of uh, feeling a bit better from it, but I'm still not 100% right with it. It really just throws you. I can't even imagine people doing this every other day, you know, so that's got to be insane. What, um, what triggers these things? Well, you know, you have to be uh, genetically wired. Often there's a family history. Generally, a mother has it, passes it on to her daughter or son. But then, if you're wired for it, there's a number of conditions, uh, such as skipping meals, not getting enough sleep, depression. For women, it's very tied to hormonal menstrual cycles. Um, so certain foods can do it. Stress, actually. Stress is the number one trigger. And at the Headache Center here, one of the things we talk about is how to reduce your stress or how to deal with your stress to try to knock the number and severity of your headaches down per month. Is there something that people can do when they get a migraine? Is there, what kind of treatment is out there? I mean, is it medication or what is there if we're starting to get a, because, you know, I can tell when I'm going to start getting that migraine. I feel it going and I'm sure a lot of folks out there do too. Sure. For the infrequent migraine, for the few a month, uh, we generally like to give patients specific medicines to take as soon as possible. Uh, one of the most common ones is Imitrex or Sumatriptan, and that works on the, uh, the receptors in the brain to shut down the migraine process. Now, if you have more than 15 headache days per month, you're not going to take a pill every single time. Uh, you'll run out of pills. So we put, some, we put you either on a daily medication or actually the only FDA-approved drug for the treatment of 15 or more headache days, this chronic migraine condition, uh, believe it or not, is Botox. Hmm, really? Why Botox can do so much, can't <laughs> Now, how was the Botox taken? Uh, Botox is a, it's a, it's a prescription medicine done in the doctor's office. It's injected. It's a little tiny needle slipped under the skin. It's, believe it or not, 31 injections, but it can be done very quick, and it's rather painless. Uh, it's around the forehead, side of the head, back of the head, neck and shoulders. And, you know, this came out in 2010, back in October. I was one of the investigators on a very large study uh, all throughout North America that showed that people who got Botox injections compared to a group that got dummy injections or placebo, basically water injections, those that got the Botox had a decrease in the number of headache days and the number of headache hours per month. And why is that? It uh, decreases the swelling areas? 
Well, you know, the exact mechanism of action of this is unknown. This was discovered rather accidentally uh, from the cosmetic docs who noticed that some of their patients getting Botox cosmetic would say, boy, I... I look terrific, but I used to have these really bad bigrams. I haven't had one in ages. Um, then the science went forward. So we're not exactly sure what we're doing to the little nerves under the skin, but I think that we're decreasing their ability to fire pain signals into the brain that generate the migraine. Now, somebody that does this procedure, do they have to know exactly where to do the injections? Yes. Um, you know, it's fortunately Botox is uh, rather safe, but it should be done by an expert. Uh, so those who have chronic migraine, and interestingly, about 80% of folks who have chronic migraine haven't even been diagnosed as such. So, you know, the first step is figure out what you got, and if you do have this chronic migraine condition, get to a neurologist or other headache specialist. Um, there is a website, it's called BotoxChronicMigraine.com, and folks who want to go on the Botox Chronic Migraine website can get some information on what it is, how it's injected, and then find a provider. You know, I'm sure there's a few up in the New York area. Now, uh, we know that when you're doing it for cosmetic purposes that Botox tends not to last all that long. How long will this procedure work for? So in the studies, and, and, and my experience as well, it's about 12 weeks. So what you get is, you, you know, about three months of a reduction in the number or severity of your headaches. So I have patients who, you know, I say they see me every season, winter, spring, summer, fall, and they come in, they get their injections, and, um, you know, I, I say to patients that, you know, not all medicine works in everybody, and we know that, but when it works, boy, there's nothing better because you're not taking an everyday pill, you've had less headaches, you've been given some of your life back, you can now get to work, uh, you can now take care of your children, you can now have fun with family outings, etc. So, you know, coming in four times a year, they don't really think of that as much of a burden. They actually look forward to it. Um, how um, much does it reduce them? Is there any kind of a pattern? Does it, you know, cut them in half, uh, almost eliminate them, or does it vary from patient to patient? Well, it, may, it, it, it certainly varies. You know, the average in the studies that, that, were, you know, that led to the approval in 2010 were to reduce nine headache days per month or so and about 40 uh, headache hours. So it kind of gave them a work week back of uh, headache freedom. And that was the average. Now, of course, there were some who responded very little or not at all, and there were some people who it was virtually 100%. Hmm. That's really interesting. Do, do you see uh, a, b a way to cure migraines somewhere down the road? You know, there's a whole lot of research um, for a condition that affects millions of people. You know, chronic migraine, the subset, about 3.2 million. But if you look at all migraine sufferers, we're talking 36 million Americans. That's more than uh, heart disease and diabetes combined. And, again, although it doesn't kill anybody, the disability, the missing things on a day-to-day -day or week-to-week -week basis is profound. There's not enough scientific research being funded, I think, by the National Institute of Health, but there's a lot of... Uh, pharmaceutical studies, et cetera, going forward. We're looking for the keys to turn this off, and we've got some really, at the research center here and other sites around the country, we've got some dynamite uh, possibilities that we hope are going to yield some fruit down, down the road. Now, for those of us that suffer occasionally from migraines and don't really feel that they need to get to the doctor yet, uh, is there an over-the-counter that, that seems to work well for people that develop these migraines? Uh, yeah, but it's uh, very much a double-edged sword, and here's, here's, here's what I mean. If you have an infrequent headache a few times a month and you reach for Aleve or Motrin or even Excedrin and all those products like Excedrin, Migraine, etc., uh, they sometimes can help, at least for a moderate headache, not a severe one. The problem is if you have a number of headaches, so, you know, several headaches per week, and you keep taking these over-the-counter medicines, the over-the-counter medicines, believe it or not, can actually cause headache. And we call that medication overuse or rebound headache. So what happens is they take it, it works, they take more, and then all of a sudden they have an everyday headache, and that's what drives them into my practice. And one of the first things I do is say, okay, let's cut out the over-the-counter medications and get serious with treatment. The headache pills are causing the headache? Yeah, the headache pills that. can cause the headache. Yeah, I've seen that. Headache, Sometimes if I, I'm taking anison for a headache or whatever it is, if I take it for a couple of days, it, it almost seems like you can't get rid of that headache. It's like it, you yeah. know, it's it's like it's almost causing it every day. But that 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 does make sense. So uh, and, and, any, yeah, go ahead. 
I was going to say, so what, what happens is you build up a, a blood level of this medication, let's say Excedrin or Anacin, and then what happens is when your body gets too used to it, when you go to sleep at night, the blood level drops precipitously, and you wake up basically in withdrawal of that medication. Mm. Uh, and then what happens? The body gives you a headache. Very interesting. I, for me, Anacin seems to work the best. Is there a reason for that? Well, you know, anison is a good anti-inflammatory, so one of the things that happens up in the brain is a big cascade of inflammation. It's almost like a, a meningitis without the bacteria. Uh, and so if you can decrease that inflammation, uh, you're going to get ahead of it. The thing that you need to do, and you've probably found this yourself, is you have to take it as soon as possible because if you wait too long, uh, it's already an out-of-control runaway train, and then anison's not going to work. That's exactly right. Anison is just aspirin with some caffeine in it, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And there's a number of other preparations like that, including some prescription ones as well. Does the caffeine, uh, taking coffee or whatever it is with a thing like uh, anison or whatever, that, does that help better with headaches in general? Yeah, again, same idea. Uh, used infrequently, if you had uh, one headache a month and you took anison or four aspirin and a large cup of black coffee, uh, you're, you're going to really help your migraine. The problem is caffeine has been shown to be a trigger for migraines as well. So if you want to do this two, three, four, five times a week, you're going to run into trouble. And one of the things we do at the Headache Center is we say, all right, for three-month period, we're going to cut out your coffee, your Diet Cokes, etc., your Red Bulls, and often that uh, can help clear up the headaches. Interesting. All right, so if people would like more information, who would they go to find out about this Botox? So Botox Chronic Migraine, all one word, dot .com, uh, is a very useful website uh, for folks who think they may be suffering from this condition. All right, very good. Well, you know, uh, e either way, I know we all get headaches from time to time, and, um, you know, it's no way to go through life. And Boy, if we could just eliminate stress, being like you said, that's one of the big ones. If we could just knock that out, I think that would knock out a lot of headaches. But unfortunately, got to go with the flow, I guess. As you better goes. lay off the coffee yeah, there, right? so that's it. I'm going to have another cup of coffee right now. All right, well, thanks Cheers. a lot. Very informative. Thanks for coming on the air with us this morning. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, guys. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, guys. My pleasure.